live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Las Vegas at the Sands Convention Center. This is theCUBE's coverage of Dell EMC World 2017, our eighth year covering EMC World, first year covering Dell EMC World as it's show transitions. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program where we go out to the events and extract a signal. Two cubes here, getting all the data and sharing that with you. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Keith Townsend. Our next guest is Jeffrey Singh, who's the founder and CEO of Druva. Druva Inc. is the Twitter handle. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Thanks for having you guys here. Looking forward to this interview because uh, you guys are a hot startup, very entrepreneurial, started you know, grassroots, now fully funded, Sequoia Capital, a lot of big time investors. In now the hottest startup space, which is like data protection and back all this stuff that, you know, like we thought the game was over. No one's funding pure storage stuff anymore as all this stuff is kind of done. Congratulations. Thank you very much, appreciate that. 300% year on year growth of your Phoenix line. What's your perspective? I mean, because you guys are out there with a clearly an unmet need. Cloud is been very active on public for developers, but as people start to innovate, they go, they look to the cloud because it's fast. Your thoughts on, on that dynamic and how that's helped your business success? Absolutely. I think cloud for us is not so much technology, but a business model, shipping business model. Someone figured out how to apply retail economics to uh, IT and sort of buying on demand and consuming on demand. So if we look at data protection, right, people really care about delivering a, a core piece of SLA across the globe on a predictable cost, right? And, and that's what truly the power of cloud is. Economies of scale, you can deliver the same quality of service, no hardware needed, anywhere in need. And there's a real dearth in the problem given the diversity and dispersity of data. Customers are trying to figure out what does my data management landscape look like? I'm deploying AWS, I'm deploying Office 365, I'm deploying VMware. How do I make sure not my data is protected but also fully managed from a governance and compliance standpoint? and Drova comes in to, to build a, a bridge between the whole prediction management power delivered purely from a cloud, cloud standpoint. From a customer standpoint, I can imagine that you guys were innovative, but yet a lot of IT shops have not invested over the past 20 years in really skill development. Now certainly there's a lot of pressures, all that's out there. So now I got to learn cloud, I got to do the backup, I can't screw that up. So you guys are coming in, what do some of those engagements look like? Take us through a day in the life of how you guys got engaged with customers and, and where the, it clicks for them. Was it, was it speed of the deployment? Was it the cost? Take us through the engagement that you have with customers. It's a great point. It's a whole experience of delivering a true SaaS service, a predictable SLA on a predictable cost. I think a conversation starts from, a, it's, a, it's a risk mitigation project and the whole RAS aspect of it, re resiliency, availability, scalability of a solution, right? Are you, Mr. Customer, going to risk by putting a DDoS virtual edition on 100 terabyte AWS EBS storage and not sure about who handles security, resiliency, part of it, or you're just going to buy a SaaS service where predictability and cost are fully managed and you can and you can pay as you go. You don't have to pre-purchase and buy. So that whole understanding that I have to now use my CapEx, sorry, OpEx budget to buy a predictable SLA, I can simply have a fully managed service basis, is incredible for customers. And that's what they look for us to deliver a complete end-to-end -end experience and not just cloud wash things and deliver the same old box just pre-packaged. So let's talk a little bit about the challenges that you guys address specifically. When I look at cloud, I get really frustrated with the ability to, it's nice to be able to throw data into S3, it's really cheap to get it there, but backup becomes a really unique challenge. When I need to back it up and then I need to get it back. How do you guys help with that, backing it up, getting it back at a uh, cost factor that makes sense? It's a great question. So any disruption, right, changes a few things exceptionally well, and then it's going to have a few linchpin discussions to be solved you know, for a, a good parity discussion, right? So cloud is a, is a very strong discussion around TCO and SLA. The, the customer always thinks about my security, my cost, and my, also my RTO, RPO to your point, right? So in cloud, we really solve the hard problem of building a global dedupe, a global single scalable index. So moving your data to and fro between your on-prem to cloud became 10x faster. Think of DDoS, but delivered as a service throughout the world through an AWS interface, right? 
And then comes the part about how do I make sure the predictability of SLA is true? So for any larger data movements, we integrate with stuff like Snowball or Greengrass to make sure that the edge computing part of the world is taken care of really, really well by integrating with the transport layer like a Snowball. So take us through the digital transformation phase. You know, it's buzzword. Where's the business value at the end of the day when I'm able to, you talked about edge, I have a, whether it's Snowball to uh, AWS or using your global dedupe, and I'm able to now, what's the use cases? What, what can I do with that? Awesome. So digital transformation, as I said, is actually truly a data transformation. People are rethinking the entire data landscape and architecture. Are they going to be deploying more unstructured, structured, NoSQL, on-prem, at the edge, in the cloud? And the more dispersed the data gets, the more centralized it has to be the data management pain. Over the last 10 years, people built different strategies to manage information, from backup and recovery, to archival, to DR. And because this innovation happened over different periods of time, they, they built different architectures. In today's world, you want a consolidation where you want to have a single pane of glass to be able to manage dispersed information more centrally. And the epicenter, because the directional shift is more towards cloud, the epicenter for data management happens to be in the cloud. So what are the big problem people really want to solve, right? It starts with backup and recovery, but people are really challenged with e-discovery and governance. How do I know what I got and where, right? Where do I know the next order incident is going to happen from, right? Then they challenge with compliance monitoring or disaster recovery or business continuity. So when we put the Drova landscapes and Mr. Customer, cloud can solve a lot of things, but let's figure out what it can solve today versus you know, with Drova, what's the journey with Drova? So we really, really simplify your data prediction landscape today exceptionally well, no hardware needed. And from that we go to build your, your optimization strategy for data governance. And then from there, a transformation use case about higher value analytics, uh, classification of data, or even applying AI to your information. So let's talk about data mobility when it comes to, as it relates to workload mobility. Mm -hmm. So with this secondary data capability in the cloud, am I now able to move workloads basically between AWS on-premises, or what, what capability does it give me from a, a workload mobility? From a workload mobility perspective, you can, you can do two things. First of all, if you build your data management in the cloud, you can leverage that to uh, obviously backup and then do a DR or a mobility orchestration in the cloud. But you can also ensure that future, when you move your data to the cloud, the data protection goes with it. When you eventually do a transition over, you don't have to remap your entire data management strategy. You can map those cloud workloads from a data start prediction standpoint, the same cloud data prediction strategy you have today. So it makes your data more mobile from be able to boot in the cloud, but also data protection more versatile for protecting your cloud workloads. So a little bit, a little word on the analytics that you guys provide. Mm -hmm. What analytic capability you provide on top of that data? I think the possibility of analytics is amazing, right? I think we live in a world that data is the new oil economy, right? So there's a rudimentary stuff which you do really well today, which is like, show me what's dormant, what's active, what's passive, what's consumed, and how do I build my data protection strategy, e-discovery strategy based on what's being consumed and delivered and how. That's a starting point, and we do that very well today. The cloud gives a nice layer of visibility on the entire data. Then comes, can you build a partnership to go inside data to make it searchable? Can you search patterns of data which are not visible like PII, GDPR? So we partnered with likes of Access Data or Sophos to build deep, in, deep search analytics into data. And then the last part is the transformational stuff, right? Uh, what can AI do for me, right? Are there any problems I couldn't solve historically because of lack of historical data or lack of availability of compute to solve it? So one of our key customers was competing with ransomware issues, and we went to them and said, what if we apply AI to your backup logs and show you that we could predict ransomware much more, much ahead of your security consultancy firm, and voila, we could show them the, the change in data patterns. And they said, yeah, of course, <laughs> yeah, that's a yes. Exactly. <laughs> so applying Google Tensor to the data pattern, what could it show you? Can you predict a document being 60% MNA versus 40% HR, right? 
that's so you do tensor flow on the logs we don't do as a as a paid offering today but we've done this experiment with customers and okay. show them the value uh, it's to change your mindset probably exactly. right it's tbd it's a showing the power of like what a, a holistic data management could look like versus the point solution and whether we do it or we bring a third party partner is TBD. So right? Jess Breed, I got to ask you, I mean, this is just begs the question. I mean, you must go into customers. I mean, if you're doing some little AM machine learning demos to get them excited, they got to have their mind blown, but then they also freak out like, I just bought this huge data warehouse. So there's a lot of folks who have that pre-existing information management systems. So the question is, what do you see disrupting their environment? I mean, obviously your model points to the cloud and you know, using the data the way you're doing it, but what's the life of the customer? What's that, because they might have fully baked out, installed, may not be optimized for the new cloud native world we're living in to be, get that kind of data and all that searchability. What's their world like? What do they need to do to change? Should they change? When should they change? When should they call you? Take us through that. Absolutely, so there's a pendulum swinging between completely managed or, uh, or self-built, right? And customers, some customers want experience and they're willing to pay for it and say, you got it all, show me the best you can or bring the best of breed partners with you. And some customers think that they've, they've built the best of the breed uh, data platform and how do you enrich it? So we have to do both, right? We ultimately are data fabric, a secondary data fabric. So can we feed the, the data we have collected into a, and enrich their existing Splunk repository or existing loop repository to make sure that they get the insights from us, they can process and correlate with other patterns in the enterprise, and we do that as well. But then the other part is that, is it a fully integrated build by Druva or a partner offering? So we have 38 ecosystem partners, we partner with like four different e-discovery providers or six different you know, log management players or, or four different purchasing vehicles to fully integrate and manage the whole cloud experience. And uh, as a player, we have to, yeah, we're So you got to be ready for the customer to say, however they want to engage with you, you bring exactly. the ecosystem to the table, or you can come in and do the self-service and the, the, the cloud. Exactly. Great, what's the biggest challenge you've had as an entrepreneur? Obviously, what a journey it's been. Um, got some big time venture capitalists, but where'd you get the idea from, and how did you get it all started? I think I got started because, uh, you know, the fundamental belief that you want to, you want to uh, do something different with your, uh, with the aspirations you have and the life you have, and uh, you think you have an idea of what the what could change the world, and obviously that idea changes over time, many times over. But uh, the truth you know, the world doesn't believe in yet, right? That's the thing which keeps on motivating you and pushing you forward. And and what's the best the world have seen of you, right? Still keeps on pushing you on the human side of things to sort of push forward. And then you know how much bruises can you really take? Uh, that's a fun part of it, right? Like. Uh, you treat life as a life, or treat life as a war, and yeah. how do you want to live it? When did it click for you? When you go, wow, this is actually, we're onto something here. I think it's a, it's a journey, not a, not a, not a milestone, not a moment. right? So not a, it's, there've been many such moments where you, where you think like, you know what, this is the best thing I've ever done, I'm going to go live, and there are moments you say, you know what, get a different CEO, I'm not, not, not built for it. It's a journey, you have yeah. to evolve, and you have to you know, fight for it. Well certainly, you woke up one day and the VCs were, Writing big fat checks. I mean, it's a sales job every single day. You have to convey, you have to sell to your employees, sell to the VCs, sell to customers, and sell right, to final, you guys. Final question for you. Take a minute to, to talk to the to folks who are watching, and, and and explain why they should call you and when they should call you, and what's the best time to engage you guys for the, and in, in in a variety of different areas. What's the give them the one minute uh, update on when to call you, when to engage, and the value you provide. I think customers are considering a cloud, uh, how, how does cloud impact their data strategy? How does cloud impact their uh, data availability, data governance part of it, right? Drua is a partner to call because we're not cloud washing everything and giving a storage array ultimately. We are truly building an architecture built for the future to deliver value and protection, management, governance, and intelligence. Great, Jasper, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Jasper Singh, founder and CEO of Drupa, here inside theCUBE at Dell EMC World. He's prepared for it all. Bring the ecosystem to the table, or straight up use the cloud product, cloud data protection. This is theCUBE, bringing you the, the action here from Dell EMC World. I'm John Furrier with Keith Townsend. More live coverage, stay with us after this short break. <laughs>